What's going on everybody, JDog here. Welcome back to Tearless Tuesdays. And these are recorded live over on my Twitch. So if you guys wanna come see them live, be sure to stop in and keep an eye on my socials for when I go live. Today we are doing a tier list of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, starting from Iron Man going all the way to Echo. So yeah, I did add a haven't seen tier cause that only goes to one, the Marvels. I didn't see the Marvels mainly because Pretty much everything about it was spoiled for me on TikTok before it even came to theaters. So I was like, well, what's the point in seeing it if I haven't, like, if I've seen everything, you know? Like, I'm sure it's a great movie. I've heard good things about it, but I'll probably see it sometime in the future and maybe update this later. So, yeah, it's going from S to F, and uh, let's go through it some easy s tiers the first iron man it was the first movie it was the first movie so you got to give it props for that for starting all of this and the effects the score rdj's acting everything like it was it is still a great movie going back to see it it is still a great movie next we have the incredible hulk which honestly is one of the last times we really got First and only times, really, now that I think about it. The first and only times where the Hulk really felt like a monster. Soon enough, it just kind of fizzled out into just, oh, he's just a big, strong guy. And even the whole duality thing got shoved to the side. So just for that, I'll give it C tier. Because I was going to give it D tier, but just like it's not great. But I do respect it for actually trying. I do give it respect for actually trying. So Iron Man 2. Honestly, I don't think Iron Man 2 or 3 for that matter is that bad. Are they as good as the first movie? Not even close. But this was a good like this was a good stepping off point. Like this is like the awkward stages of like, oh hey. This is a continuation of a now shared universe. So like you got to set a few things up. You don't get it right the first time, but all the stuff in between, it is great. So I think it it's, a, it's at least a B tier, like high B, like the top of B tier right now. I think right under that is the first Thor movie. Like, I feel like this and Love and... Th not Love and Thunder. Ragnarok. These are the only two good Thor movies. I'll get on the other ones later. But yeah. You know, like, this was the only time where Thor and Asgard really felt like themselves, really. Everything... How do I want to say this? It kind of fizzled out, essentially. It essentially just fizzled out. You know? Like, Thor eventually just became, like, the, Oh, look at me, I will silly, I don't understand human customs, even though I've been amongst humans several thousand times. Like, him learning humility is just great. So, yeah, let's give it a B tier, it's honestly. Captain America, the first Avenger. Frankly, I think this is great. I think the whole Cap trilogy is great. So I am easily giving it an A tier. It's not s for me because well i haven't seen it in a while so like if i were to go back and see it it would probably be s tier but like it's definitely high ranking a definitely <sighs> good the score and everything the eff like it really does like the way they set up this being set during world war ii like the background effects and everything, not the effects, the sets, that's the word. Like the sets, it really does immerse you into this world. That's one of the things I really like about this movie. Like it really is, it really feels like you are in that time period. Then first Avengers, another easy S tier. It's the first Avengers. Like this is one of the few times where an entire, you like things have been falling into place and it, all came together to this it was difficult but they got it done they did it perfectly it was setting up the future for so many other great things like you, you like you can't put it anywhere under s tier 
Iron Man 3. Honestly, it's it's honestly one of my favorite movies in the Marvel Universe. Like, it was like the first movie I saw when it was like the midnight premiere, but it wasn't exactly at midnight because of what happened with The Dark Knight Rises. But uh, like the earliest screening. So yeah, like I was obsessed with the Mark 42 armor. I still think it's cool. I might actually do an Iron Man suit tier list. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you want to see. But yeah, like I was obsessed with the Mark 42 suit. I think I still have the hoodie. It's somewhere I'd have to go get it out of storage. I don't even know if it'll still fit me because I've been getting them gains. But also, like, the main theme song, like, the... It's fire. Like, I wish they used more themes of the superheroes. Like, like I feel like they've only done it... When did they do it? I think it was only Cap. Like, they rarely used it for Cap, because in the Avengers movie, it's the same composer. But, like... Wouldn't it be really cool if, like, when Spider-Man showed up, it was the dun 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 or like Ant-Man, where it's like dun 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 dun, you know? Like, I mean, that put it such specific musical cues is a bit difficult to just like like blend together. It is a little difficult, but hey, who knows? Maybe they'll do it in the future. Thor of the Dark World. Like, the only significant things I remember about this movie is the fake Loki death, Loki turning into Cap, and then Loki turning out to be Odin. Like, that's it. Like, those are the three significant things I can think of about this movie that other movies, like, don't focus on too much in the future. It's like... I don't know what they were trying for, but it really was just not it. The Winter Soldier. Another S tier movie. Like, just the fight choreography was insane. Sebastian Stan just spinning around his knife was fucking amazing. Just like the stealth suit on Cap is awesome. Just the whole espionage vibe of all of it. Like, you can't top it. Like, you can't top Winter Soldier. I mean, it's few people good, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know why I said that. Anyways, Guardians of the Galaxy. I think, like, future effort spoilers, I think all the Guardians movies are S tier. So let's just... I'll get to them when I get to them. I'll put them right next to each other. But yeah. Like, just the trilogy alone of this story of a found family. And the soundtrack, the acting, everything James Gunn did behind the scenes. Like, I have faith in the DC Universe. Like, the new one with Superman Legacy. I have faith that James Gunn knows what he's doing. It was just super emotional, while also being, like, super campy. The set designs, like just Rocket Story in general. Yeah, like all the Guardians movies are S tier. It's, it's too easy. Age of Ultron. I'm going to give it an A tier. It's not S. Like it's still great. But this is when like a lot of things about characters started to show off. And then like a lot of the early like somewhat main complaints about the mcu's like i think this is where it first circulated like the overuse of comedy the downfall of the character that is the hulk like it all started here in age of ultron like there were great moments don't get me wrong but this is when a few people started to notice like a few just a few cracks like i think if they got rid of the Hulk Black Widow subplot, you know, maybe turn down the jokes a little bit, at least for the characters who don't normally quip. I mean, it wasn't fully quip heavy. It's, I think it's when people started to really notice. Well, it doesn't really start to notice until later. 
but like this is where the seeds were planted but like it's still like a great movie and honestly like one of my favorite avengers movies well there's really four so you can't really say that they're all pretty much all great to me the first ant-man movie i i think there's like a lot missing like i feel hmm i'm kind of indifferent on the ant-man movies i'm kind of indifferent on it i might just give it a c i wanted to give it a b tier but like there isn't really a whole lot of standout moments except like scott's you know driving desire to be there for his daughter like his relationship with cassie but like quantum mania kind of brought that down a bit i'll get to it when i talk about quantum mania yep so after ant-man we've got captain america civil war which i don't know if i want to call it s tier we'll put it top top of a for now top of a because like it got us our first introduction to black panther first introduction to spider-man like the characters like this felt like avengers 2.5 but it still very much was a Captain America movie because Steve and his relationship with Bucky was the center point of all of this. And it did tie into like Sokovia with the whole thing with Baron Zemo. They were fighting like for some valid reasons for sure. The movie had somewhat lasting consequences mainly for Team Cap. But like everyone else kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I think A tier is pretty good. The first Doctor Strange movie, I will give B tier. Like, I will top, give it top of B. I love the effects. I love what they did with the whole sorcery stuff. Like, the score is pretty good. But, like, there were definitely reshoots where it tried to add more of that MCU humor that was really starting to pick up at this point. Like, I felt like this was a bit more of, like, the little bit more serious tone to like balance out the next movie that would come after this which is guardians 2 like great ways of balancing out without it all feeling like it has the same kind of comedy i definitely think they should have kept it more of a gritty tone but that's just me so guardians of the galaxy volume 2 another s tier movie they really went hard on the soundtrack the whole thing with yondu and peter like, just Peter's story in this movie. Going off with Rocket. Like just, this is, like, this is really good. Like, these are... It's hard to, like, really describe something you really love, you know? Like, I really love these movies. Like, I think if I were to rank the Guardians movies, it would be 3-2-1. No, 3-1-2. Because this is where they kind of like dull down tracks a little bit. Except for that one moment with him and Mantis. Like just the whole thing with Yondu's funeral. Bro, it's really great. Okay, Spider-Man Homecoming. I think it's definitely an A-tier movie. Not S-tier, but it's definitely A-tier. What's stopping it from being an A-tier is... Like Peter's entire motivation for this movie is to impress Iron Man and Liz Allen for the most part. But like the moment where he like stands up to Tony where he's like, if you actually cared, you actually be here. Then Tony showed up, he immediately backed off and like turned to a scared little puppy. Like he should have just like kept going off on Tony. Like, you know, if you had just told me that you called the FBI, if you had trusted me with this, if you had been more open with me, cause this affects me, the little guy that you want me to protect. These weapons affect them because they're not attacking the rich and powerful like you. Like, that would have been more of an incentive for Tony to take away the suit. I feel like he was trying to... I mean, like, it's a character motivation. And, like, the whole, come on, Spider-Man, so... Phrasing. The scene where he's lifting the rubble off of, off of him, that's what I meant. So... Yeah. Like, I would give it an A tier. Okay, also, like, random tangent. I kind of wish... In this movie, there was like a pre-established crush on MJ where Peter was like, like he's torn between Liz and MJ. Like he doesn't know which one to choose because he likes them both for different reasons. Because that's a pretty valid thing to have when you're a high schooler, like having multiple crushes for different reasons. I know I had that. But then Ned was like, dude, you're an Avenger. If anyone can get with a senior, 
it's you like just for electric credibility and it would make his crush on mj in far from home make a lot more sense i think if they toned back a little bit on the impressing iron man like i feel like it would be an s tier because like that is obviously like the biggest problem with mcu spider-man for the most part until no way home where he's like really stuck on tony stark's legacy i'll talk about that more when i get to far from home for ragnarok another i'll give it a tier it's another high a movie the whole thing with immigrant song i think it's called thor like the whole i'm not as strong as you you're stronger like in here korg was funny like this is like this is when the taika watiti thor movie was you know like it was all the good stuff you know then love and thunder came along and it felt like a parody again i'll get to that when i get to it i just don't think it needs any explanation like it's just it's a tier it's solid a black panther this is an easy s tier like the int- just the significance the cultural significance of this movie alone like in my brain there will always be a cemented like this little video i saw on instagram where it was like there's a couple of little kids like i'm that one like i'm that one and they're pointing to black panther because they see themselves in these characters like that's how much these movies mean to so many people like in ways that i personally will understand with my complexion so like and obviously like chadwick boseman r.i.p the killmonger the score like just everything about this movie like it was made with love like you could tell like even if the final fight was very cg heavy like everything before and after that you can tell it was made with love avengers infinity war another easy s tier the culmination of all of these movies coming together for this event just the whole like thanos as a villain super compelling they made him his motivation super understanding you understood his um i say emotions motivation you understood his motivation even though the way he did it wasn't exactly the right way to do it that again that's what makes him a villain like good motivation wrong execution by like complete execution like the fact that they lost like the theater was quiet when the credits rolled like holy shit okay then captain marvel which should be here which is weird don't hate me for this internet but like c tier it wasn't bad for me like it was good i have a few questions about it like how the hell the tesseract got into space it's like this is in the 90s it's like i don't know how she got it into space it's okay that's it honestly it's okay like there's nothing like crazy about it avengers endgame also s tier like these two movies go hand in hand like that's why it's like a bit lower than avengers infinity war well honestly that doesn't really matter yeah just both of these just the significance of this like the events like this was something where the entire world of marvel fans and like even casual movie movie fan goers like this is how we all felt united like when cap said avengers assemble i felt like he was talking to all of us as well like all of us watching the theaters in that exact moment we were avengers and we have assembled the emotional payoff for tony stark and steve rogers natasha's sacrifice all of that that just goes to show how much they really cared about these characters regardless about your opinions on the mcu now you could say at least with avengers endgame like this this is where they're trying their damnedest to make sure that they were making good movies on top of you know making movies I mean, they're making sure that they were good they were loved by fans Spider-Man Far From Home, D-tier. 
It is my least favorite Spider-Man movie of all time. And the reason it's not F tier is because the things with Mysterio, where he's not a disgruntled Stark employee, it's great. Like the whole thing with the Peter Tingle, another reason it's D tier. But like that entire sequence and that action set where he is pretty much out of webs and he has to improvise. That's great. That's totally Spider-Man. I think this is like when like the big problems with MCU Spider-Man begin to like really surface. Like even after Spider-Man Homecoming where he's like, nah, I'm, you're right. I'm going to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I'm not going to be like you. I'm going to do my own thing. He's still obsessing over Iron Man. And, it's, and even the scene where Happy gives him like this nice little inspirational message like hey you don't have to be iron man like reaffirming what peter wanted it's then immediately cut short and just becomes nothing because happy starts playing back in black you know the iron man song like if peter said instead like hey can we change this i don't like this song they would have immediately fixed that also the entire concept of edith is stupid and i don't know why tony stark entrusted that into Peter Parker. Brad Davis is the most pointless character in all of cinema. Like, he was so insignificant and useless. He wasn't even name dropped in No Way Home. He, not, not the character returning. He wasn't even mentioned. That's how useless he was. How pointless he was to the story. And it, again, this is like what I mentioned before about MC Peter not really having a backbone. Like, he, like Mysterio does a lot of like the telling off nick fury thing like in the scene right after like like right before the opera scene like mysterious the one who tells him like well it's because you kidnapped him from a summer vacation peter should have said that and like him and fury would be like you know on each other's sides and mysterio would play the middleman he'd be like hey 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 I'm, like getting on both people's sides you know and also the whole like peter accidentally sending missiles like that wouldn't have happened if that fucking creep shield agent didn't tell peter parker who was still a minor who is still a minor in this movie to take off his clothes right in front of her do you realize how creepy that is when you say that out loud without knowing the context do you know how creepy that is a grown-ass woman telling a minor to take off his clothes in front of her like yeah that's not great like the only few things is like tom holland's still a great actor like the end suit is awesome like the more i think of like it it is just a d-tier movie like i tried rewatching it one time but like as soon as they got to the part where nick fury is getting mad at peter for like nearly destroying the bus with edith like i just I don't know, I got frustrated because I immediately went, well, you didn't tell him that it did that. You just gave him the glasses with a half-hearted quote. That's it? Like, did you expect, like, did he expect Peter to have it all figured out within a, an hour of getting it? And not only that, it's not even Nick Fury. It's Talos the Scroll pretending to be Nick Fury. And, like, I don't know the placement of Secret Invasion, but, like, if it was definitely after Far From Home, but, like, was it before No Way Home? Like, that would explain, like, Talos dying, well, explaining why Fury wasn't there to bail out to Spider-Man? Like, ay yeah, yeah. It's just not great. I would... I'm not going to rewatch the movie when it comes back in theaters. I'm just not. Ant-Man and the Wasp. This movie came out in 2013. 18 why is it i'll give it a c tier it's all right i mean giving hope the suit was like her having her becoming wasp was great but they did kind of dumb down scott lang a bit like he was like hey they pre he pretty much had paul rudd be himself pretty much what like this felt like just hey be yourself but also you have the power to shrink yeah like it's just meh like it was terrible but I probably wouldn't rewatch it. And WandaVision. I'm gonna give it. I'm stuck between A and B because, like, on its own, it is great. 
but the current sword director like immediately switched on a dime it was like immediately a bad guy instead of being like more sympathetic obviously like this is when like the theories of tiktok and instagram and youtube like like this is when it started to pop off like almost every ep like yeah every episode had a different theory and, like the whole thing with ralph bonner i'm not gonna like discredit the show itself for that because the writers like was weren't expecting the whole evan peters thing to blow up the way it did which is honestly kind of weird considering that like hey it's this character from another movie universe like i feel like they should have like cons i feel like kevin feige at least should have been like you know a lot of people are gonna think that this is the quicksilver of the x-men universe right like i don't know i feel like kevin feige should have seen that coming at least him yeah like i do love how it's switched between different eras of sitcoms every episode like the acting was phenomenal i don't think agatha harkness as a character was likable enough to warrant her her own show i'm just gonna say it like agatha all along was fun for like two weeks then it just like faded off it did not warrant the need for a show falcon and the winter soldier i haven't rewatched it in a sec so high a definitely high a like sam's whole arc of becoming captain america even accepting the implications that will come with that like his whole speech at the end of the last episode where he just explains like hey we have common ground i know how hard it's going to be to be captain america as a black man with the stars and stripes i know people are going to judge me and i don't care i'm still going to do the right thing then we've got bucky's arc fully realizing that hey i am no longer the winter soldier i am james buchanan barnes like even john walker like had a nice redemption where he could have chosen revenge but he decided to be a hero sure he's like not perfect and still has a lot more work to do like even baron zemo i'd say he was better here he was better here than civil civil war though yeah i think the reason it's a tier is because what they did with sharon carter like making her the power broker was a weird move like a really weird move i don't know what they were thinking with that loki now if you had told me that loki was going to be my favorite mcu show when it first came out i would have called you silly just the last two episodes of season two alone made it my favorite like just the last moments where loki his last words are for you for all of us just like in the first movie or even with mobius's i might just wait here for a little bit let time pass like just that line hits because like the time various authority is always moving always interfering with time where they need to like always going from point a to point b always going somewhere they never really have a moment to just relax and let time pass plus the music that played with it black widow if it came out in like 2016 it would be b tier but like we know how her story ends so like like this was mainly just to set up yelena and red guardian that's it like it's meant to sh like the new black widow like that's it's meant to set up newer characters and like oh hey here's a little moment for natasha i feel like it could have done, been done a lot better and also taskmaster it's like i don't know i feel like the concept that they worked with making her like the child of the leader of the red room like that was like a great concept but like just making her the silent assassin then turned like good guy mind controlled like i don't feel like she didn't need to be mind controlled like she like natasha set her up to die like natasha is the reason she is disfigured like she should have just had that burning hatred to begin with and not like have this like pseudo redemption where they like spray the cure where she's like what have i done like she should have just still been like i hate you natasha you killed my father i will kill you like keep taskmaster as a villain not like don't turn her into an anti-hero even if like even if she saved you yeah i feel again 
if this came out in like 2016, 2017, like, but if it's, this came out before Endgame, I feel like it would have been better. Like, even if it was the same script, same cast, everything. What if? What if? What if? What if would have had interesting concepts? Because half of the season, of both two seasons, is just what if this character was this character? Like, what if we made Sharon Carter captain carter and what if we made captain carter the center of everything like she was like i don't know why marvel cares about her so much like i love Haley atwell i was thinking of Haley steinfeld i love Haley atwell don't get me wrong like she's a great actress and like the few mo like the moment in the whole universe where it was like set during like the 1800s like the all of the avengers like that moment where Captain Carter and Steve Rogers like had the chance to like really bury the hatchet of their love. Like I felt like that was really nice. And like this, they had their first official original MCU character in Cohorty, which it's like it wasn't bad. But I'm confused on how the Space Stone gives you super speed because I guess whole thing is teleporting. I mean moving from one space to another i guess that's just one way of doing it but like then like making supreme strange just like kind of regressing their character and the whole thing with infinity killmonger where like he's got this vibranium suit with the infinity stones Gahori just snaps them snaps them all up and then killmonger's just back to themselves and like just the ending where like all of those characters are falling half of them can fly why aren't they trying to save themselves like they're just giving up and throwing all of their shit to captain carter and cohorty giving them like these really weird like combinations that look like you just smash together a bunch of your lego pieces or like you're throwing on random cosmetics on fortnite like that's what those alternate suits like that's what it looked like to me and you know for season three, there's going to be a third Captain Carter-centric episode where it's Captain Carter in the whole universe of Civil War. Like, what if Captain Carter had to go through a Civil War with Tony Stark? That's my Watcher voice. I like it. I, I feel like what if could have so many more interesting concepts. Like if each episode was an individual one-off that didn't connect to a finale and like it had more concepts like i still don't understand why they haven't done a what if the other half of the universe got snapped away like that would be such an interesting idea like i wish they did something with spider-man like what if you know like one of the avengers interfered with the whole mysterio thing like what if Nick Fury actually helped Peter. Like, what would happen if Aunt May... Like, all that didn't happen, so Peter didn't have to go to Doctor Strange for the spell. What would happen then? Like, he would just have his identity exposed, but still probably make it to MIT? There's so many better concepts. And also, just, like, the complete obsession with Captain Carter just makes this show a D-tier. Because it all started here. Junk Chain, The Legend of the Ten Rings, S-tier. Like, the fight choreography, the storytelling. Like, I I wish we got more of Shang-Chi. Like, he is such a great character. Like, I wish we got more of him. Eternals? I mean, I'd probably give it, like, a low B, high C. We'll give it a low B for now. Because, like, I think it is a pretty good movie. Like, it's very much set in the mcu but doing its own thing which i do enjoy when films do it right there are times where films do it wrong it's like you have to introduce like a whole new cast of characters all in one movie you have to introduce the celestials and like with the runtime it was given i think they pulled it off pretty well hawkeye i think is an a team kate bishop Haley Steinfeld does a great job, and the way she bounces off Yelena is great. Like, Lucky the Pizza Dog. Like, I love Golden Retrievers and pizza. 
So having a golden retriever that loves pizza, fantastic. Like it really gives Hawkeye, like it really makes you care about Hawkeye and his family even more. Which is one of the things I did like about Age of Ultron is that like they humanized him a bit, gave him a family. And like what they did with Kingpin was pretty cool. Like they made him more tanky. Like he was able to survive an explosive arrow and like other big explosives. He walked away practically unscathed and got shot in the face. Went out with just a few, just, just a scar. They really made Kingpin like very a comic accurate tank. And I think it set up Echo pretty well. Spider-Man No Way Home, I think is S tier. I know I've mentioned like all the problems with the Doctor Strange spell and how that doesn't make any sense. Like Doctor Strange trying to make Peter feel bad about having a double life. But I, like when it really starts to focus on Peter trying to help the villains, that's when this movie becomes S tier. Like the whole fight between him and Green Goblin going through the apartment complex. Like the way Aunt May's death like really hit Peter, the great power, great responsibility. The the other all the three Spider Men coming together, like the way they really respected what came before. Like they could have easily just made everything a meme, like Andrew Garfield could have came in riding on a skateboard, but he didn't. It's like a direct continuation of Spider Man three and Tasm two. And the ending where Peter's willing to give up everything he knew and loved just so like everything can go back to normal or a semblance of normal. Everything can go back the way it was and everyone is saved. But Peter has to make a sacrifice, which is one of the cores of Spider-Man. Doing what's right, even if it has to sacrifice something. Moon Knight, I'm going to give it an A tier as well. It's not S tier because they did kind of shy away. From the violence which like kevin Feige was like oh my gosh you're so like we gotta pull back on the violence like no he didn't say we're not gonna pull back on the violence he said no we're we're gonna lean into the violence you really only got that with like cutaways like this felt like it had the same violence as almost every other sh show and movie they definitely shied away from the anti-semitism that was part of moon eyes origin him like Mark Spector being Jewish was almost never touched upon because like that is part of its it's part of his origin it's part of his character, it's not just like a side thing. Like and what they did was just have like they just had him take the yarmulke and slam it on the ground, which is a big no no. That's like burning the Bible. You're not supposed to do that. At least from like some of the people that I follow that are Jewish. If I am wrong about that, let me know in the comments and like explain it to me because I'm not Jewish. Like, I def- and, like, the way they set up Jake Lockley is just to make him, like, oh, I am the evil double, I am the edgy one, like, there's so much more to these characters than just Mark Spector being the broody one who will throw a punch, Stephen Grant being the little cinnamon roll who was like, oh, I'll just talk, I'll talk my way out of this, and then Jake Lockley who's gonna be like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Like, there's so much more to that. I think, but like the stuff they did, like with Khonshu and like the suits are great. The action is great. And what they did with his dissociative identity disorder, it's very close to S, but I, it's missing a lot. Like I think it played it safe. Like if, if it leaned into it a bit more and like what they're, what they did with Echo and like leaning in more to the R rated, like the mature rating stuff. Like, if they lean into it a bit more for Season 2, I, it would definitely move, might move it up to S tier. Just like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I don't care what you say. I love this movie. Sure, the Illuminati bit was a little... Like, okay, we get it. It's the multiverse. It's Captain Carter. But then the way Wanda immediately just kills all of them, that was like Sam Raimi being like, oh, you want me to, like... Do this whole mandated multiverse saga stuff? Okay, I'm gonna kill them all right in front of you and completely traumatize a young group of audiences. Like, I'm gonna make Black Bolt blow his head off. I'm gonna cut Captain Carter in half like Darth Maul. And the practical effects, like, no, a lot of the MC movies don't really do much with their camera work. Like, Sam Raimi did the best he could. 
with what he was allowed to. And I think that alone gives this movie an S tier. Because I love Sam Raimi. Like I think he did a great job. And the message of, are you happy with your life? You should be happy with your life and not be envious of what might be. Like accepting reality will make you stronger. Doctor Strange accepts reality that he cannot be with Christine, even though he will always love her. He accepts that. Then Wanda like needs to accept that she can't have her kids in this universe. Like she needed to accept that. But for the other Wanda telling her, know that they will be loved. Should be enough to tell her like, hey, I may not be able to have my kids, but I know that in every other universe they are loved. And that's what matters. Miss Marvel, I'm going to give it an A tier. I very much enjoyed Amon Vellani. She does a great job. She literally is Kamala Khan. Like the way she will literally like stare Kevin Feige down and be like, hey, you're wrong, buddy. This is how it's supposed to be. This is it. And the fact that she's actually writing for like Miss Marvel and it's actually really good. Like, yeah, but they made her a mutant. They really hate the Inhumans. We know this. The reason it's not S tier, though, is because if it was just focused on, I don't remember the name of it, but like they use the drones from Far From Home, Damage Control, I think it was. Like, if it was just focused on Damage Control being the main antagonist and not having the demons from the parallel universe needing to kill Miss Marvel to get her bracelet or whatever. Like, I think if that wasn't in the show, and if it was just focused on that, like, the whole her coming to terms with, like, being her own superhero and, like, her own identity. I mean, like, she can go back to her home country, but, like, maybe Damage Control follows Miss Marvel because they, wa they want the bracelet to use his power. Like, if they didn't focus on the multiverse stuff... Like, I think they're called the Jin. I think they were called. Like, if it wasn't focused on them, I think it would have been an S tier show for me. Because their whole motivation is like, hey, we need your help to, we need your bangle to help us get back to our universe. And then Miss Marvel finds out that if she does it, she might die. She's gonna be like, hey, can we like look more into it so I don't die? They're immediately like, we have to kill her. We have to kill her. We have to kill her and take the Bangladesh. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. Like a switch activated. Like they didn't like talk or talk it out with her. They were like, no, nah, yeah, you got to fucking die now. You got to fucking die. Thor, Love and Thunder. It's another F tier. Like, as I mentioned earlier, Thor, Love and Thunder feels like a parody of Thor Ragnarok. Like a YouTube poop. They made Thor like this complete dude bro Chad. Like a himbo without any redeeming qualities. They ironically butchered Gore the God Butcher. Like I feel like they leaned too much into the comedy. And a lot of it was just senseless. senseless. Like the screaming goats was like it was funny when they first showed up. But like that's it. They're screaming goats. That's it. Yeah. And like Korg. He... Why not shut the fuck up? Like, I was... Like, when I first saw the movie, I was, like, sad that Korg died, but then he became just a face. The ending where Thor, like, sympathizes with Gore to be like, hey, don't use this power to kill the gods. Bring your daughter back. And, like, the whole thing with Jane and her battle with cancer, like, they did a good job with that, I'd say. Like, they, did a, they did a pretty good job with that. It feels too much like a parody. Like, it feels like almost everyone here was just doing it just so they could get paid to work out projects they actually want to work on. And I do respect him for that. She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Controversial. I don't think it was terrible, as people will say. But it's also not like the second coming of Christ. I love Jen's story of, like, just accepting who she is and, like, having, like, really obscure characters show up, like Mr. Immortal. Like, it really does help flesh out this universe. Like, this definitely is one of those shows that helps flesh out everything. Like being like, hey, this universe is very much lived in by people and I wish we got more of that. I feel like nine episodes, I feel like they could have shortened it a bit. Like maybe, maybe like seven. Like shortened it by two episodes maybe. And I did like Jen's fourth wall breaks. I 
do wish it was more like in the finale where she like literally broke out of the Disney Plus thing and like went into like another place to like have Kevin the robot be like, hey, change my show. Like I wish it was a little more like that. It wasn't just Oh hey, I'm stating I'm breaking the fourth wall and stating some obvious things right now. I don't know. I feel like they should have done utilize the fourth wall breaks a bit more. Not like Deadpool level. But yeah, I love I love Jen Walters and I hope we see more of her. Werewolf by Night is very much A tier. Like how it leans into the old style horror. It's completely in black and white. I hope we see more of the Werewolf by Night and the Man thing. It is just a one off story, but I do very much enjoy it. It was a great thing for Halloween. And I hope we get more projects like it. Wakanda Forever. I'm torn. I think I think it's also an A tier. I don't know if, just like with Black Panther, this movie was made with a lot of love. And clear respect for Chadwick Boseman. And like they were walking, they knew they had to carefully walk on eggshells. Because they did not want to disrespect his legacy of any way, shape, or form. I do... I understand both sides of like not recasting and recasting. I'm fine with either one. And like they did have like a bit of a compromise with like technically T'Challa Jr. at like the post credit scene. So like I can definitely see that maybe if there's like a time skip again, like in, in Endgame or just something like that, where T'Challa Jr. becomes the next Black Panther and we continue having T'Challa stories on top of that. Because I feel like T'Challa should not be like erased from Marvel Comics just because in the movies he is no longer with us. I think Namor was definitely an imposing antagonist. I don't know if he's as strong as the Hulk, but then I'd, I'd have to see them fight. Like you can't say, oh, Namor is as strong as the Hulk and not give us someone who's like Hulk level to like, you know, see if that argument is true quantum mania also f tier it's just remember when i mentioned that the relationship with scott and cassie is like the big defining thing of the movies like they kind of started to f like lean back to it like lean into it too much i did like the moment where like scott's like splitting off into like infinite possibilities but helping cassie is like the one thing that keeps him going that they all agree like we need to help our daughter i like that but that's the only good thing about this movie and like kang was intimidating but he fell down to a bunch of ants like this is the guy who killed multiple avengers multiple different versions of avengers he got beat up by a bunch of hyper intelligent ants suit designs for the ant squad not great like over designed to me like, Cassie did almost nothing in this movie. But, like, they made it seem like she was, like, in the right for Scott not doing anything, even though he's done so much. Like, they tried calling him out on it, but, like, he's done a lot. Like, he is the reason that half of all life in the universe returned because of him being trapped in the quantum realm. Like, I probably wouldn't rewatch it. And plus, they set up Kang to be really intimidating, but look where that got us. <laughs> mm. Anyways, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is an S-tier movie, obviously. Bro, I was on the edge of my seat this entire movie, wondering who was going to die. But the fact that no one died and everyone got a happy ending, I loved it. Dog days are over. Just that entire, fr the entire sequence where everyone got their happy ending. The moment where we finally understand Groot because we are finally like fully fledged family of the Guardians. Like I can't think of a single bad thing about this movie. Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the best trilogies of all time. And I really like the holiday special. It was very nice. Drax and Mantis doing something really nice for Peter. Finding out that Mantis and Peter are siblings. So Peter still technically has family in space and on Earth. Like, it really just gives you that true meaning of Christmas. Of It's like, it's about family, not not of experiences. Like, or I guess kind of experiences. Like, it's not about the gifts, no matter how high value they may be. It's about your family. And Guardians of the Galaxy is the perfect team to do that. Because they are a family. They are the most family 
out of anyone in the MCU. I'm really starting to sound like Vin Diesel. Firmly. Secret Invasion. F tier. It is. I only saw one episode. It was okay. But the fact that they used AI generated images for the intro during the beginning of the writer strike, right before the actor strike, is like, yeah, that was bad. Like you couldn't like you couldn't have gotten someone to actually make shit. Shake my head, Marvel Studios. Shake my head. And it was just, like the finale. It was just like a hodgepodge of two scrolls going up against each other. What are they gonna do with Amelia Clark's super scroll? Like she has practically everyone's power, so Either she's going to be super nerfed or Kang's just going to or whoever the bad guy is in Avengers 5 and 6. Like just one shot her and kill her instantly because they don't want to deal with someone with all that power. I'm not going to I'm not going to finish Secret Invasion unless they update the intro with actual artists. I'm not finishing that. Echo, not going to lie. I only saw the first episode and I never finished it. But what I saw, I did like. I think I saw episode two. What I saw, I did like. I think having like more mature settings is great as a starter for the MCU. The fight scene with Daredevil was great. Wilson Fisk is super intimidating. Again, I never finished it, so I can't really talk about it as much. So yeah, this is my official ranking for the Marvel Cinematic Universe from phase one all the way to Echo. I think anything else has come out since, except X-Men 97 which isn't the MCU. It's a completely different thing. If it was, it would be an S tier. Yeah, X-Men 97 would be an S tier. So yeah, that is my tier list for the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you guys agree with this list or you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And I'll see you all next week for another Tier List Tuesday. Peace out.